I was in Jerome, a ghost town in Arizona. The old hospital was said to be particularly haunted. I went there with my two aunts. They're actually amateur ghost hunters, so they have all kinds of crazy equipment. Well, there's a tree out in front of the hospital where a little kid supposedly died. So I went over and I was waving the EMF reader around. I started to get some readings, so I was reaching up higher into the tree when I felt very distinctly a hand tugging at the back of my shorts like a little kid trying to get my attention. But when I turned around, there was nobody there. Submitted by Misty. Hey guys, I heard about your podcast on Jim Harold's Campfire. I was going to tell the story on there, but since you're local Austin guys, I thought it would be better. Love your show, by the way. I had never heard of Dogman before this happened, so I didn't know at the time what else to call it other than werewolf. But obviously, it's a little embarrassing to tell people you saw a werewolf. I mean, I would have looked at me crazy too. But anyway, this was in the early 2000s, 2003, actually because I was just starting college for the first time. I was moving to Texas from Illinois to go to UT and I was with my parents. They were helping me bring some stuff down from my dorm room. I've always kind of liked supernatural stuff, but I don't know if I believed in it, strictly speaking. But my parents are super straight laced and don't believe in anything they don't have physical proof of. My mom is a nurse, and my dad was a sergeant in the army, and now he's in insurance. But like I said, both are no-nonsense kinds of people. Anyway, we were coming down I-35, but pulled off to get some gas in the town of West Texas. My dad didn't want to stop in Dallas because he said getting on and off the highway would be a pain. And we saw this place called the Little Czech Bakery and decided to get some snacks as a bonus. We didn't really know it at the time, but I guess it's like a well-known place to stop at. We got some kolaches, which were really good. My dad filled the car up, and we are just pulling out when this figure ran toward us from up the road, just running down the access road, but like really fast. At first, I thought it was a person, but then it ran into the light of our headlights, and I swear to God it had a dog's head. I started screaming, and I think my mom screamed too. My dad just like gunned the engine like he was trying to hit it, which made me scream again. But it ran past us and down the road, and my dad took off. We had to head back north and loop around under the underpass before getting back on the freeway, and I remember looking back the whole time, terrified. My mom and dad really won't talk about it with me, but I swear it was a dog man. Later, I read about the Beast of Bray Road and was like, that's it. Unfortunately, there weren't any iPhones or anything back then. I wish I could have taken a picture. Submitted by Ramona, Austin, Texas. I guess I stepped on a stray sod somewhere in the woods and was ferried away for a few hours. Scariest experience of my life. And I work in a sketchy area of the city too, so that's saying something. I knew the woods and the pathways, but decided to wander off into the bush. And the bush is thick and wild where I am in Manitoba, Canada. It's a long story, but basically I was out camping and went against my usual morning habits. It's almost like I was hypnotized to go out in the woods at that time of the morning. I didn't go to the washroom, brush my teeth, have any breakfast. I left my phone behind, still in the same clothes from the day before. I didn't even drink any water. I had the strongest pull to go out and leave it all behind. So I did. I got out there, wandered off the main path into some thick bush, turned around to the path I came from, and was making my way back to the entrance to go back to my tent, but the entrance was gone. 
The entrance was a paved path in, but turned to grass once you got to a certain point. I made it past that point, expecting to get to the paved path back, and there was nothing. The grass kept going and going and going. going, going, going. I turned around thinking maybe I confused myself, but I knew where the pathway was. So I ended up going up and down each pathway that branched out from a sort of central crossroads into the forest. The pathways just kept going and going. They were literally never ending. ending, 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 ending. I tried to follow the sound of the highway to get to a major roadway and find my way back. But each time I got closer to the sound, the sound slipped back the other way. So I gave up. I tried the pathways again. That was useless, still the same endless pathways as before. In the distance, I heard the garbage men clearing up the park. So I started screaming for help. I could hear them, but they couldn't hear me. So I kept going up and down the paths, up and down the never-ending paths, making it nowhere in particular. The woods were infinite and looked quite a bit different from our native forest here. The trees seemed bigger, older, During all of this, I could get into a paranoid thought that something was going to come out of the woods to eat me, that there was a wolf man in the woods, prowling, waiting. I also kept thinking to myself that the fairies were dancing with me, that they were messing with me. I'm never going to get out of here. I'm going to die here. They'll find my body out here 50 years from now. I also kept getting the odd feeling that maybe I should take off my shoes. I don't even think that was my own thoughts. Luckily, I went against it, because now I've heard that quite a few missing 411 stories on where search teams find the person's shoes out there in the wilderness, and that's all they find. Stuff was getting scary. I started pleading, praying, and begging whatever deity I could think of. Eventually, I sat down at the center of the crossroads and just begged my way out. I said I was sorry. I didn't know what I did to have this happen. At that point, I was starting to resign myself to my fate since I really did think I was never going to get out and I was going to die there. I stood up and went to find the entranceway again, which was where the never-ending pathways through the fairy woods was. There it was again. The main pathway back to humanity was there. So I ran all the way back to my tent. I was trapped for a good few hours. It didn't feel that long to me. This was five years ago now. Last year, I went with a friend to check the area out, and it looks completely different, like the woods got up and moved around. I've had many strange experiences in my life, but this was by far the scariest. Submitted by Redditor, The Lurker, 204. There's an area out on my land in the woods with some mounds. I don't know if they're Indian burial mounds or what. I've never dug into them. Supposedly, archaeologists explored the area years ago and found tons of artifacts, but I don't know all the details. Anyway, most of the 11 acres is wooded, and we have trails through it. Some made by us, and some are animal trails, but we use them too. My wife runs on them. It's safer than the roads out there, which don't have any shoulder to run on and I use them just to walk the property to check things out. There's a clearing out there near the mounds I was talking about, and I try to keep the clearing mode. I was out there one day and saw what I can only describe as a shadow person moving across the clearing. I felt a sense of dread. Honestly, I was so scared, I just left the mower there and ran back to the house. It was tall, six or seven feet, I think, and human shape, but just a dark shadow, no solid body. My wife saw it too, and she said she was never running near there again. My son also saw it. Both said that they felt the same terror that I felt. Maybe it's a Native American ghost. Maybe it's something that was never human. I don't know what it was. I've never heard of anything like it. In recent years, I've done a lot of digging and land development work to make some extra money. I have the equipment, so it seems like a reasonable, easy way to make money. Well, not easy, but straightforward, I guess. A lot of times if I'm digging a pond or cattle tank or just taking down some trees or something, 
Neighbors will come and watch and shoot the breeze and whatnot. So one day I'm on my backhoe and I catch sight of someone just standing next to a big tree by the fence out of the corner of my eye. I assume it's my neighbor and get off the backhoe to go talk a bit, take a break. But when I get over there, there's no one there. I think to myself, where the hell did he go? But I kind of shrug it off and get back to work. Then I see it again out of the corner of my eye. And this time I don't stop, figuring they can just wait till I get to a stopping point. But when I do get to a stopping point, there's no one around. Now, I'm starting to get a little annoyed, but whatever. I get back to work, and I see it again. And this time I look over there, and I see a Native American man, dressed like a chief, standing over by the tree watching me. I was shocked, and I glanced away, because when I looked back again, he was gone. Submitted by Victor, Austin, Texas. Sweet dreams, sweet dreams, sweet dreams, sweet dreams, sweet dreams.